Quella from Aldafria, welcome to Nightbreed. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going great, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on, it's good. Um, so, Aldafria, I'm guessing, started this year? That's when the releases have been coming out, yeah? What? Yeah, it, um, it started in about uh, May, uh, earlier this year during lockdown. Um, I'd basically taken quite a hiatus from music for about a year or so, and um, it's something that I'd wanted to do for a, a long, long time, and it just the opportunity just sort of arose, and I realised that I could make the most of the time that we've got in lockdown to start this project. So, um, a bit of investment here and there, and um, ironing out a few details, and then here we are. Like you know, we just released our uh, first EP a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's great. Um, what first got you into black metal back, you know, when you first heard it, that kind of thing? Oh, wow. Well, um, many years ago, there was a, a you'll remember, probably remember yourself, there was a show on MTV, it used to be called Headbangers Ball. Yeah. And um, this was in sort of my earlier teen years where um, it'd be on very late at night and um, it'd be more extreme. I'd never come across a show before and uh, Behemoth were on it and the, uh, with a song called Slave Shall Serve. And that's what really got me into um, extreme metal. And then I think a few years later, discovering bands like Satyricon, seeing them live, um, Gorgoroth, Marduk. And it all just kind of came from there. And then there's so many subgenres of black metal that it's really easy to um, kind of get lost in it. And there's so many different varieties that you can listen to. So they've been like very influential over the years. and. I think they've had like a massive influence um, on this uh, EP that we've done now. Yeah, great. Um, what's the metal scene like in uh, Lancashire? Like, um, are there many black metal shows on or anything like that? Um, they do. They do have a few black metal shows out in the because we're near the uh, the Lake District here, so they have a couple of black metal shows out there, out in the woods there. Um, the black metal scene in general, in in the UK in general, isn't isn't as big as you know a lot of black metal fans in the country would like it to be. I don't think, but that's just the way it is. Um, where I live, particularly now, is there's a bit there's a massive punk scene here, um, which was something that you know that I was I was into a long time ago. But black metal is very it is still very niche, I'd say, in this country. Far from you know a couple of couple of relatively big sized acts but it's relatively quite small even around here yeah. I'd say okay I know in Australia there's a little bit of a cross punk black metal crossover you know occasionally they'll yeah. do shows together that kind of thing so maybe one day you mm. never know yeah, <laughs> yeah <so>. absolutely <laughs> um so uh in deepest isolation your EP came out uh yep. September this year um how was the recording that one? I'm guess, so you were saying you had to invest in some things to, to get it together, hey? Well, it was, yeah. Um, the thing with the Deepest Isolation is all recorded remotely. So the the process was that I would write the music here, uh, record the bass and the, just yeah write the music out and uh, send that over to the guitarist who's in Germany. He would record his parts, um, put a drum track to it, send it back to me, then I would send it to the US for the vocals and the drums to be done and then we just sort of wrap it up in a bow and uh, yeah, and then present it. But it's been it's been very different from uh, the usual the typical um, studio experience. It's been it's got its pros and cons, like I won't, I don't know which one would be better but um, there's a great amount of convenience doing it this way and you can probably focus on yourself a bit more but you know there is a few sticky wickets if you like along the way but i think we did a pretty good job to get out a record that was as as in deepest isolation is um considering we're all you know different parts of the world so um how did you get together with um musicians overseas like how'd that come about well it was more about um delving myself into the black metal community a bit more um mainly through black metal promotion uh, the big you know, big big YouTube site mm. who premiered our EP and um, it was meeting fellow musicians through there. The guitarist was actually originally a session musician. Um, I'd gone through you know a couple of guitarists and then through black metal promotion I met um, Troll who's the singer and the does the drums as well 
and um, I met Mio who did the artwork and it just became like a bit of a community project um, and we would it a lot of a lot of file transfers is basically how it all came together and um, you know send it back to me you change that send it over there it was a lot of you know sending things about but it, I think it all came together quite well considering the circumstances yeah that's cool um, what kind of lyrical themes have you got on this uh, this release? Um, so, I think with a lot of a, a lot of black metal, there's obviously the man the the stigma of it being, you know, a lot of satanic and folklore and things like that. What I sort of wanted to go for was a bit more. It's sort of the same thing, but it's a bit more true to sort of English history. So we've got, you know, tracks from, uh, you know, detailed Hundred Years War, uh, the Battle of Bosworth, um, and then you've got the, the sort of the fantasy folklore side of it, like Shadow of Barghest, the Barghest who roams the moors. So that's a bit of, uh, you know, English folklore. Um, so, yeah, and I think we've also done, you know, like Worm Cellar Deep Precise Isolation. They are a bit more the themes of um, satanic, but in Deep Precise Isolation, it's actually related to the Divine Comedy and the frozen lake uh, in hell and worm cellar is more the interpretation of um people even in the middle ages and old england their interpretation of what hell was and how similar it is to today because worm cellar essentially means hall of serpents and that's what they used to sort of call it back then so yeah it's more it's a lot of uh, sort of english folklore and um delving into different themes around that yeah that's cool um, what's the response been like? It's been out for about a month now. Have you had many downloads that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, we've uh, it, it's it, it's exceeded expectations for sure. The the uh, community have been brilliant. The feedback was amazing. Um, some of the reviews have been you know really complimentary. Quite quite surprised um, uh, it being considering it was you know our first first go of anything together. Um, the first thing I've ever released solo, so um, it was a bit. It, yeah, it, it it did really well considering, um, and it's kind of sort of spurred us on to you know do the next work, start working on the the next uh, part of the Alder Frey project. Um, the the best response obviously was through the uh, the premiere we did with Black Metal Promotion was to have so many people there listening and enjoying it, and it was sort of like a natural high. It was it was absolutely brilliant, and uh, now we've obviously got onto more um, digital platforms, so. Uh, it will hopefully give more people the opportunity to, you know, hear it. Mm, no, great, man. Um, I noticed from your single to the EP, there's been a bit of a logo change. What um, spurred that yeah. idea? Like, yeah, um, the demo was um, something that I wanted to really get up to help launch the our, you know, our presence on social media and presence online in general, and. That was sort of a building block, and then I got in touch with um, Christoph, who did the uh, logo for Emperor, um, and many, many other black metal bands. Um, and he did the yeah, so he did the logo for that, and he did an amazing job at that. And again, it came back to the sort of community project. We, you know, you get people in sort of like the Discord channel sharing their artwork, and. Um, seeing some people's work then you sort of like that that would look really good for this and you sort of start working with the artist to get um what you want from um from that so yeah it was kind of like a, a bit of a natural progression um i think the you know the the first logo did serve its purpose but when you get the opportunity to work with someone like christoph or you know you're working with these really talented artists as well like the i mean i could barely draw a stick man i'm terrible at that kind of thing so um yeah, it basically came about like that. Really, it was a part of the community effort, discovering more artwork, what people you know capable of, and yeah, it just went from there. Yeah, that's great, man. Um, so, what's the plan? You're saying uh, are you guys writing or working towards another release? Yeah, we we are at the minute. What we're planning to do is um, we're still obviously plugging in deep isolation as much as we can. Um, we you know maybe lyric videos we're trying to we're, we're organizing merch at the minute because that's been something that's been uh, quite heavily requested and um we're currently writing a, a couple of, a demo track or two maybe just to 
send off to you know any labels that might be interested or uh, just just to just sort of keep the creative sort of juices going because you know once we finished that we wanted to do more so we're planning on releasing our first full-length album in 2022 uh, i'm not sure when um but we're hoping to have a new single out uh what will be from that album uh sometime before christmas hopefully oh fantastic awesome oh look well uh, thanks for your time and um, i definitely enjoyed uh elder Freer so far so yeah came to hear what comes next man thanks Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Dave. Thank you very much. Oh, cheers. See ya. Cheers, man. See ya.